Kia ora and welcome to the Nishcast. It is I. I is him, slim with the tilt to brim. What's my motherfucking name? Diggity Doc, Mr. Slippers, the Papatoi Panther. Here for another episode of the Nishcast with the Wobbly Wildcard. And I'm going to go hard and fast, straight up the guts and throw it up to Wildcard. How are you? How am I? Yeah, well, I'm not sick, so that's a nice start. Although, you know how, like, I promise this isn't going to be weather chat. This is just a distraction. But you know how, like, the big old drought and everything. And then the last couple weeks, it's been, like, there's been probably one day where it's been genuine summer. Like, um, uh, there's been lots of days where it's been sunny, but just a little bit chillier, like changing of the seasons or whatever. There have been lots of days where it's been hot and humid, but overcast or just a bit of rain coming through or whatever. There's been one day over the last two weeks where it's been just pure, like, high 20 degrees, just too hot to go outside for too long. And guess what happened that day? I had my first game of preseason footy, so um, not only... Uh, are the legs still, uh, the legs are alright, I did a bit of, um, what do you call it, I did a bit of, like, recovery yoga last night, which actually did, you know, hit the spot, I tell you what, uh, but, like, I had, like, I had sunblock on, I thought ahead, I sweated through the sunblock and still got sunburn, it's crazy, like, this is, there's some kind of glitch in the matrix when that's allowed to happen. Indeed, and I, and just furthering on that weather chat, the, obviously there's a lot of stuff going on in the world at the moment that I'll allude to in a second, but I try and, if possible, ideally, best case scenario, I get to see the water every day. It's a, it's a important thing for me is just to see the ocean, if I can, every day. Um, and when you're seeing parts of nature on a regular basis, you become very aware and you start to observe changes and um, things that aren't normal, perhaps, and just how nature operates and what i've noticed recently is that there's been a ridiculously high high tide which is interesting when you consider the the craziness that's going on around the world at the moment and then there's a high tide like uh going by the i think it's the tamaki estuary in auckland that goes from the pacific ocean the waitamata harbour through to it's actually a beautiful piece of water when you consider it goes through you know um just past otara just past papatoi and odahu and then it stretches out into the big pacific ocean beautiful body of water and the mangroves that are usually not uh, that are visible that are usually visible they were completely underwater and i'm going to hazard a guess that this is a the recent high tides have been about five to six, if not more, meters higher than usual. And it's just something I've noticed. So, um, yeah, that's it. And what we are going to do today is, as the niche case, we we take uh, the well-being and just, we it's our responsibility to lead young Kiwi folk spread a positive message, put out positive propaganda, completely flip the script and help play our role in, in leading young Kiwis forward uh, past the bullshit, past the, the shenanigans and antics and just and just help our young Kiwis out. So the niche cast, we usually strictly talk about sport. Um, and while this podcast will not talk too much about act the actual uh, rona that has taken over the world at the moment got a sip of that rona i don't maybe you do it's all good um so we're just gonna we're just gonna chat our way through this episode with ideas thoughts a conversation to help young kiwis in what is interesting times i'm, I'm viewing this as interesting times for the world and for us as people and then so these ideas and this kind of more esoteric chat that we we do um we are going to do on this episode of the niche cast we do talk similarly on our patreon episodes so if you do enjoy our our minds and our expression of our intuition and just our ideas you can get access to our patreon podcast on patreon and support us on patreon and we record two episodes of the niche cast each week so the plunkett shield has all finished and we're just waiting to see what happens with other sports so at this stage like 
Thursday's episode of the Nishcast will have a heavy Plunkett Shield focus, for example, and we'll just see how we go moving forward um, in terms of churning out podcasts. We might have to scrape the barrel and just start talking about our favourite cricketers and our favourite soccer players, football players, and um, team culture and the best teams in Aotearoa. If there's no sport, we're just going to keep serving up great content, either written content or podcast content, and maintain the positive spirit that is within all of us, especially those who are in touch with the Mother Aotearoa land. So any any come back to that little intro there, Wildcard? Yeah, I mean, there's a few places we could go from that. Um, I don't know. I, I well, suppose... just hit me with, uh, you got anything to add to it? You got anything to add to that before I start off this frenzy that we're going to divulge into? Well, I don't know. Let's get into the frenzy because I think all this stuff that I can add to it will come in naturally throughout the conversation. So, touche, touche. Um, let's frenzify. So these are a, a very interesting times and it's, for me... I'm just uh, feel free to interject at any stage, Wildcard, because this is all stream of consciousness, and I don't really know how to um, segment this. But this is a good time for the first point is that this is a good time to go within and to to learn and grow outside of the the bubble that is the Rona, and f- to do that, you're going to have to steer clear of news. Because what is happening with the news is that the news, obviously no one, well, some people, as we're going to, we might find out, some people are, may enjoy this time. I don't know if I'm enjoying it, but it's very insightful to me learning about myself and learning, um, for example, the NRL has triggered me to some great extent. And when when you, you feel such anger rising in you, you probably need to address that. You probably need to look at yourself as opposed to looking outside. And so for me, that's been a very good element of, of this. I'm just going to keep referring it to Rona just to keep it lighthearted and not too crazy um, to the Rona. And this has made a lot easier if you step away from the news cycle and what is happening in the news because what we have with the news in 2020 is the news is entertainment the news is solely there really to sell advertising and to make money for the broadcast network so yes you might gather important information you may be a traveler you may be going between countries you may have people in your life who are sick and so on and you need to know information that's fine But if you're just chilling, cruising, as we are through the Rona, paying attention to the news is not beneficial because the news is conjuring up consistent uh, updates and, oh, you need to know this, you need to know this, this expert's on, blah, 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 to keep you coming back. So in a weird way, for those who aren't really in tune with this line of thinking, news and media organizations quite enjoy times like this because it's a good avenue for them to get more uh, ratings to get more views to get more uh, to expand their audience and thus bolster um, their revenue but that is not conducive with your well-being as a person so unless you are desperately in need of finding out information my my first line of thinking here and something that I have experienced myself with Um, I write about rugby league, so I need to know what's happening with the NRL. But what I found myself doing is being drawn into like knowing what was happening with the NRL, which then led to just triggered me and led to a lot of anger coming up. So I had to fall back from that. I had to gain awareness of what was happening and I had to fall back. And now I'm just trying to focus on knowing what I need to know and limiting the exposure to such newsy antics because that is the best thing you can do like right now for your well-being as a person as a human being on earth the kind of the less you need to less you know the better like unless it's really affecting you the best thing you can do is stay away from the news probably just stay away from social media even because you're going to have people in your life who are 
um, think they're experts and they need to update you on everything that's happening. We all have those people in our lives. So stay away from social media. And so I'll get your thoughts on that idea, their wild card. But to, to lead us into the, the second kind of stanza of this discussion, what happens when you withdraw yourself from the news and when you withdraw yourself from social media is that you either find different ways to go within either through you might take more walks you might start to fill your time with yo with yoga and meditation you might start to pursue something creative you might oh i i actually quite enjoy painting so i'm going to do some more painting like it's a great opportunity to invest your time in those other practices that you have lost because you've been caught up in that news cycle and to learn and educate yourself if you're not watching the news all you need to go like you just take away your time that you've spent on social media and watching and paying attention to the news just jump on youtube and for example there's a video of kevin abstract and rick rubin having a very open and beautiful discussion kevin abstract is um, one of the, the main members of Brockhampton, but it doesn't matter who he is because the conversation is a beautiful conversation. Yesterday I watched a um, Red Bull Music Academy do a great thing where they have like a lecture with a notable artist. Yesterday I watched Jay Electronica and heard him speak. Right now in front of me on my YouTube recommended, I've got um, a Red Bull Music Academy interview with MF Doom. And let alone all the, like the comedy that's on YouTube. I love Theo Vaughn and I like laughing. So I'm trying to just dive down deeper into that. So it's a beautiful time to learn, grow, and to see and feel what it's like to withdraw yourself from the news cycle, from the social media cycle, because I think we are finding out that none of that is actually really beneficial to you and your well-being as a person. Yeah, and like on that, everyone's going to be different. And some people in times of chaos find themselves needing to like needing to be up to date, needing to hear these things and just to put them at ease to know that something's happening and, you know, there's some element of control going on. But then also at the same time, you need to ask yourself, like, is is the chaos out there in the real world or is the chaos in your head because you're coming back to this over and over and getting a little bit like trippy on things and certainly if you're a person who's a little more anxious like just stay the hell away eh? like just 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 step back just um just ease off from these things and admit that there's certain things you need to know and certain things that aren't really going to make things easier for you they might just make you more fretting they might make you like uh more um you know a little might inspire a bit of a freak out and, and what you yeah, really don't want to be doing when you're um when you're potentially facing a period of relative isolation and you know you, we all know what like our civic duties are in this in this kind of situation like it's not really about our, like the chances of me getting sick the chances of you getting sick are lower compared to others but that doesn't mean we might not be able to spread it like it's um it's just it's just common sense and it's um you know love for your fellow human to to not go out there and um and make things worse risk making things worse taking risks that would affect other people especially more than yourself like it's just it's, you know it's just a nice thing to do um i yeah i mean i probably won't check off twitter completely but i certainly i think i I don't know. I've developed a bit of a filter where I know what I need, what I know what information is valuable for me, and I know what isn't, and I can like toss the stuff aside that isn't like fairly comfortably. If I know, I think a lot of people just sort of news is news, and not differentiating between different outlets who have different like. I mean, if you're looking for public health and safety type information, which is really the only thing that's relevant to us at this point in time, like stick to your government funded type stick to your rnz's and bbc's stay the hell away from like your network news channels and stuff like that because that's not going to help you one tiny little bit um i'm yeah i uh, excited is obviously the wrong word but when life gives you lemons you make lemonade right so i kind of will if if it comes to this like at the moment hopefully i get to play a full football season and all that if i don't well that's why i'm maybe thinking i should probably 
<laughs> offer to pay my fees in installments so I don't end up paying full price for a uh, minimal season. But um, I, if like if it comes to that where I actually am put in a situation where I need to do the old self-isolation thing, and I say, I say this as someone who lives like a bit of a hermit anyway at the best of times, so it's probably not so much of a stretch for me. Like, I would kind of... I want to embrace that, you know, like uh, what you were saying about looking down like, uh, the, you know, the the big list of to watch on Netflix kind of thing. And here's, here's your chance to roll through a few of those if you can't work, you know, if you um, can't do other things. Well, this is this is that opportunity that you've been waiting for. Now is the time to make something really useful of these things. Um, I, you know, learn a musical instrument. Um paint pictures like you said um all sorts like read those books that you never got around to reading like just all so many things that you could do which you've always said to yourself like i just don't quite have the time to do that like i don't have the time to commit to it i don't have the time to learn how to build tables and chairs and stuff i don't know like anything is there's so many um like what have you always wanted to do here's your opportunity to do it now right Definitely, and a lot of those activities are quite meditative, and so you don't, maybe you do something like starting a meditation practice has always been something that you want to do, but in just starting one of those other activities, a lot of them are forms of meditation, so you're going to get that benefit as well. We, I think for a lot of us and, and everyone, because everyone's kind of feeling it, it's not necessarily about the the self-isolation and the, the medical side of things, but we're living in a world where the amount of sport and other activities is grinding to a halt. And that in itself opens up the, the, um, the doors for you to reinvest your time elsewhere because so much of us use sport and any other um, kind of activity like that, whether it's music, whether it's anything else, I don't know, but or like events, live events and gatherings and so on, everyone uses those as a, as a way to escape from their minds. And uh, because it is quite a meditative practice, like if you're playing sport or if you're watching sport, you might get so ingrained and embedded in that game, in that activity, whatever you're doing, that it becomes a form of a form of meditation and that's good but now we're in a situation where yes there is that self isolation aspect if that's what you need to do but it's like a it's just a natural occurrence where the the decrease in in sport activities gatherings and so on gives you so much more time and mental bandwidth and that's where I believe you can reinvest that and start to learn and educate yourself on different matters because I think a lot of people are, they're, they're scared by this time in the sense that there's, there's no sport. What am I going to do? And me and you love sport. That's why we're here. That's why we are part of the niche cache. And so I think that can be very scary for people when they start to think, what is my life going to be like? What's my life going to look like? If I can't watch sport, if I can't partake in sport, if I can't support my team, if I can't spend X amount of hours every day uh, tapped in to the, what's happening in that sport and watching the, the games of that sport. And that is where I believe the greatest opening is for our people to develop and, and reinvest that time because it's a it's a situation we haven't faced before where that there is such a vacuum of sport and other activities and yeah that's where i believe the value is is what you're going to do with that that time like instead of getting down in the dumps that maybe your day's a bit more boring now maybe your life is a bit more boring flip that on its head and pursue knowledge pursue growth pursue knowing more about yourself even and how your mind works in these kind of situations that's the um that's the thing that struck me the first about um all they say eh, is the the i don't even know exactly how to put it like it's not the illness per se it's the sort of um the vacuum of everything else that happens where it's like because i was watching um 
well, I, I wasn't watching the game, but I was at my desk working and, you know, online as the um, NBA was all called off. And there, there was that situation at the, it was actually, you know, Stephen Adams was meant to be playing in that game. Um, he would have been guarding Rudy Gobert if Rudy Gobert had been healthy enough to play that game. But, like, I was following that as it happened, and then the NBA, who had already had meetings about what to do if the if the old Rona um, just, like, interfered with the league in some way. Obviously, they would decided, like, first case we get within the league, we're just postponing everything. And from that point on, like, it was, it was kind of shocking. It wasn't as shocking as they were making it sound like on the telecommentary of the uh, Mavs game that I was watching at the same time, but... Like, when they were talking about, like, it's the death of basketball. Basketball is over now. We'll never see basketball again. Yeah, no, nah, pump the brakes on that. Like, the thing to remember is that the the unprecedented thing here isn't the global pandemic. Like, there's been plagues all through history. There's Spanish flu about 100 years ago. You know, um, polio, things like that. Like, the, the um, like, mass illnesses sort of thing. This has been happening since the start of human history. Like, look at the, the even just like colonialism and the way that spread illnesses around and the devastating impacts that had on communities. There's another one for you. The the unprecedented thing here is that we've grown so accustomed to having so much stuff happening, like even just within the sporting realm. Let alone the fact of you look at like how um, like movies delaying their um, their premieres now because people aren't going to be able to go to the theaters and like um, festivals and things being called off, all that thing. But even just looking through the lens of sport itself, like there's so much sport on, you can easily like spend all your waking free hours just following different sports and um, keeping up to date with everything. And then suddenly just this really rapid domino effect of just like the NBA goes off and then um, a lot of European football leagues are postponing things and then it's reaching our shores now and like just all over the show, all of it's gone now. And that's um, like, it's only temporary. Eventually there'll be like solutions found and they'll figure out how to play these seasons or they'll just award them and crack into the next season. Like, well, eventually everything will be back to normal again. And people got to remember that as well. Like there's nothing to panic about. It's just... um this is just a particularly bumpy wave and you just got to ride it out and we'll be, um, come out the other side all goods. But like at the moment, not a lot of sport going on. And it's really does kind of highlight the, um, the impact that it has in a lot of people's lives and different people, I think different personalities have responded to that in different ways. Some people have taken the old, like common sense, sweet as we just got to do what we got to do. Other people have been a bit more like shocked and, um, stunned by it. And I think, the more um and the more long lasting the sort of personal impact that has had on people i think that more reflects on people who have gotten a little too probably just a little bit too comfortable in taking the kind of things for granted that they've always been served up and it's like these things it's it's only sport at the end of the day and it's funny how it's taken a lot of sports people to point that out where they've been asked to play by fans or by administrators and whatever. And then a lot of um, European football is where I've seen the most of this. P players just being like, chill, guys. Like, come on, settle down. It's There are bigger things to worry about here. We're just kicking a ball around for 90 minutes. We can do that anytime. I, like, we can, we can wait to do that for a few months. It's fine. We're good. Like, let's just take care of each other and be healthy and happy and safe. And it's funny how that, like at that point is where I think it's probably hit home to a lot of people. Whereas otherwise it's just like, we're so used to having all this stuff happening and suddenly it's, it's just not there at the moment. And it's probably been a bit of a shock. Stimulation is the word that comes to mind. Distractions and is another word. We, yeah, we're in a, in a, the modern age, we're so stimulated with so much content, so much activity and just so much happening that there's always something to stimulate your mind and distract you from, uh, the realities of yourself and your mind and how you are as a person. So when that stimulation vanishes as we are currently experiencing, because like a lot of the, a lot of the maybe like youtube content that is usually there or podcasts they're slowing down so that stimulation is slowing down but also you're seeing 
more podcasts, for example, focus on Rona. And at some point, you like what we're doing here, I think, is a bit different because we're trying to empower and, and push for the betterment of young Kiwis in Aotearoa at this time. But you're just seeing so many other pieces of content overtaken by the Rona in a very serious way. And so whether it's the, the slowing down of new content or other content being swept up by the the shitty Rona vibes and that makes me kind of want to not listen to that content. So you've got content that's slowing down and then you've got other content that is um, turning into the newsy kind of shit that we're seeing. All that stimulation's slowing down and I think stimulation and distraction is is the crux of what is happening so we're 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 losing the distractions we're losing the stimulation and that's the that's where the possibilities are for us as as individuals like assuming you've got your health assuming you've got your your family's health and everything that really genuinely matters is okay in your little world like that's the baseline like if, if that stuff isn't there, then look after that stuff and then maybe explore the, the possibilities of growth and learning and um, developing yourself as an in individual. But if it, like me and you both have our health, our families are healthy, everything's all good, touch wood. So that's where it becomes a matter of like, okay, with this complete vanishment, vanishing of stimulation and a lot of distractions moving away, that's where the possibilities are and i i kind of feel like it's a unfortunate circumstance for for the world but i think that's where the the benefit can be found like if you're able and willing to just to move yourself away from the the drama and the the news and all the negativity and the confusion if you can withdraw yourself from that tighten up your circle and open yourself up to the possibilities of just growth within yourself. That's where I think the golden nugget is for people. And it's very easy to do. And I think, to be honest, Wildcard, I think this this is all being manifested to allow people who are open to this, people who are who can kind of sense that they might have an inkling to go down this route. I believe that a lot of this is happening to help push that along and help open people up to the possibility of further self-development, further self-awareness, further growth in, in who you are and who we are as individuals in Aotearoa and the planet. Yeah, I mean, I tend to agree with that, to be honest. Like, it's, if you take, like, uh, man, I, I don't like being one of those people who are just like you know in the modern world there's too much screen time there's too much technology and when no one's talking to each other and like these kind of things like the technology is um is what's the word it's neutral the all all those kind of things are neutral like no um i was reading that i was reading an interview with um sonny rollins the jazz legend from the new york times the other week and he was saying, like, someone asked him about the ethical nature of music, and he said, well, I know music that's greatly ethical and music that's been, you know, used to, I don't know, I can't remember the example used, but, um, like, music that's been used in the opposite. Like, ultimately, music is just a neutral force, and it is what you make of it. All these things. But I still, having said that, I do agree that there are too many, that there's just too much noise these days, eh? And it's probably because we're in a bit of a transitional period where it like it might take a generation or two to figure out how like this whole internet thing works and all that. Um, maybe not that long, but certainly it'll take a little while, particularly when there's generations beyond us who just didn't grow up with this and weren't used to it. There's just, yeah, there's too much noise and too many of those stimuli and that kind of thing. And when you take that away, what are you left with? It is really like yourself and your own thoughts and i'm a pretty big believer that like um happiness comes from within and fulfillment and contentment comes from within and to have those things you need to be comfortable with just being by yourself with nothing else and meditation is a good way to 
meditation is a good way to achieve that and but it's not the only way like there are many just going for a walk just like um sitting outside uh in the sun and soaking up the rays or just like anything just even you know anything you can do where it's just you and your thoughts and whatever and you don't even have to be thinking anything specifically it's just that i think a lot of people are either afraid of being that i mean i'm going to use the word vulnerable because i think that's what it is it's a vulnerability um to be without those distractions without those things that um that like take up your the you know the bandwidth in your head kind of thing I th yeah, I think that's a vulnerability, and I think a lot of people are, but well, some are afraid of it, and some are just not used to it, and just not comfortable with it, and you, you need those things in order to be uh, living your life to the maximum, I think, so yeah, here's an opportunity to figure some of that out, just to take away the distractions and see, okay, what's left, um, what do I, you know, like about this situation, what, what am I comfortable with, with myself, what can I improve on? Well, here you go. Go improve them. Like, um, put in the work now that you've got the time, sort of thing. Um, and not only that, like, it's not just a case of um, mental health and keeping things nice and even. It's also a case of, like, bettering yourself and improving and finding ways to go beyond and, like, what kind of pursuits are going to bring out the best in me? What kind of things do I find? Like, what, what kind of art is there out there? that I appreciate to a level that brings me to the point of um, uh, epiphany or like, I, I don't know exactly how to describe the word, but you know, you, you know that feeling, right? When you, when you're watching something or listening to something, music, I think is probably the most common way to, to achieve this, but that feeling where you hear something and it's like, that is perfect. Like that's the, the best possible thing that thing could have been in that moment that's what that is right now and like just to be able to appreciate something that someone else has created to that level is really kind of special and it's one of the most powerful things i think that people can have like that artistic um uh yeah what it, i'm sure there's a word that describes it perfectly but i don't know what it is but like to to experience that is incredible like that's what we should be looking for because that's the deepest possible connection i think we can have um with the wider humanity is to be able to appreciate art together like i i honestly believe that and i think if you look at some of the some of the people that run the planet and make decisions for us um certain like global politicians but more than anything like businessmen and the culture of that i don't get the feeling that those people like could watch a play and take something valuable out of it i don't think they could look at a painting and see something deep and meaningful to them like i don't think they could listen to a piece of music and really experience that like transcendent level of um whatever it is and that's i think what honestly we should all be chasing and here's an opportunity to go do like watch those weird french like um arts films from the 60s that you never got around to like here's your chance Correcta Mundo. Another little nugget of idea that I have been thinking about um, specifically with relation to the NRL and, and getting triggered by all their bullshit, but it's evident throughout the world. And, and you mentioned you threw kind of a businessy uh, person into the mix with the political person. Um, I don't know what they're called, not a prototype, but just a guideline or whatever, just segments. But the what I've what I've noticed, Wildcard, is that, and this again, like it's a, I don't want to get too crazy, and I understand that you know there's a lot of people are, are dying and a lot of people are um, in pain and suffering, and hopefully we we can help with that in some way, way, shape, or form. But and I've I've already outlined like how this might be a beneficial to to some people and people who are open to different ways of thinking but another interesting way of looking at it is we're seeing that a lot of organizations whether they are sporting whether they are business whether you know whatever they might be whether it's just your local shop down the road that can't sustain their business because they've lost a lot of their business and they don't have the sufficient reserves to continue their business that's what i'm getting at here is that organizations and businesses and companies and associations whatever it is that is in trouble right now i believe that's for a reason because those organizations 
have neglected and they've ignored establishing strong foundations. They've neglected and they have ignored saving money, reinvesting money to ensure that that in such a crisis, and it's actually quite astronomical, it's amazing how unprepared the world and uh, certain companies and businesses and organizations and individuals are for a situation like this. And specifically with, um, I don't want to talk about individuals, but we're seeing what, I, what I'm getting to here is that an event like this is a certain leveling out of the playing field because organizations that do not have strong foundations, organizations that do not have roots that are going into the earth and aren't prepared for the worst case scenario. They haven't been wise with their, with saving money, with saving resources. They have neglected that issue and they have, and if you're neglecting those sorts of ideas, usually you are doing so because you're caught up in the greed of always wanting more. I want more. I want more. Everything's good. So it's going to be good forever. So I want more. I want more. I got to make hay with the sun shining. Oh, wow. More, 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 more. If you're only focused on more, 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 you're not necessarily putting energy and intention into laying solid foundations that then you can slowly and steadily build from. So I believe what we're seeing is that a lot of these pillars of our lives pillars in the sense that they not of a not of importance they're not pillars of importance because to be honest pillars of importance are who you are as a person if you're looking for pillars of importance to like politicians and outside sources that's a that's a major issue but they are pillars of like just modern society they're just there and we just assume that everything's honkadori and they're just always going to be there whereas what i'm noticing and I, I keep thinking of the NRL, but there are other examples. These type of organizations have completely neglected setting those foundations and in doing so being best prepared for a worst case scenario. It's not necessarily being like pessimistic and having a lack mindset as opposed to an abundance mindset and being like, a, oh, shit's going to hit the fan. Better be ready. It's not necessarily that. It's just about ensuring that everything in your system, in your processes, everything in, in who your company is or who your organization is, is rooted, is set in strong foundations so that when such events like what we're witnessing arise, the impact is always, it's always going to be felt, but it's not crippling. It doesn't destroy your business. It doesn't destroy your organization. And I am seeing a lot of organizations, a lot of businesses who do not have strong foundations, who do not have roots like a Kodi tree or a Pahutakawa tree that go deep into the earth. Because to get those roots, to get those foundations, you have to focus energy and intention over a long period of time on establishing those. If you're looking for a hard and fast solution, if you're looking for hard and fast profits and greed and those like quick fixes that's the opposite of laying solid foundations so a lot of these organizations are being exposed for their greed they are being exposed for their lack of just common sense and their lack of planning and their lack of org and organization within the organization what do you make a make of that idea world cut well i mean you're talking about being triggered by the way the nrl have reacted you're getting into one of my most triggering areas here when you talk about like uh, rampant, unchecked capitalism and things like that. Like the, it's the the politician and businessman thing. They go hand in hand, but like it's one thing. Like a lot of people are very politically active these days because things have made like especially younger people things have made um, like circumstances have meant that we've had to be. Um, you know, environmental circumstances, economic circumstances, etc. But like the real power in the world is held by business people, like the people, like the people who own like the well, just just the billionaires out there. And there shouldn't really be billionaires when you think about it. Like, 
Uh, if people are starving in the world, then nobody needs a billion dollars or an extra billion dollars even on top of the billion dollars they already had. Like, if we just spread that wealth out a little bit, and it should be on them. Like, you shouldn't have to tell people. You shouldn't have to tax them more to make them, like, share that money around so that everyone is as well prepared for a, a crisis like this as they are. But they tend to have gotten to that point by being incredibly greedy and selfish, which is why they are there. And, like, some people have reacted great. Like, uh, there's been a lot of talk about um, uh, Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, when he was interviewed on the day the NBA was um, suspended. The first thing, he, one of the first things he talked about was trying to come up with a way to make sure that the people who work for um, his organization who rely on, like, hourly pay and stuff like that, some kind of package to ensure that they're taken care of during this. Like, that's good. A lot of other owners have taken... Um, similar measures you've also seen players like kevin love um zion williamson uh blake griffin have all chipped in money plenty more i'm sure as well to help those people but then you have to then you have to also think about the fact that like zion williamson is on a rookie deal I mean, i'm sure he's getting heaps of money from endorsements but he's only played a handful of nba games he's in his first season why is he the guy paying this like, isn't there a billionaire owner at the top of that organization, at the top of every one of these organizations? What are these people doing? And the reason that the world is quite unprepared is because people like that have prepared themselves, first of all. They've taken care of themselves and not really worried about anyone else, because that's how they've made all their money. That's how they've gotten to where they are. And, like, it's it's just, it's just painfully obvious right now that we need to um, somehow rip some of that power away from them. I'm not talking about full-on revolution, but uh, in times of crisis, you know. But, like, it's just it's just frustrating because I also see, like, I can see how they're going to struggle. They're going to lose lots of money. But I also have seen far more um, times like we've already seen during a global recession what happens when rich people are in trouble like this. They get bailed out. Like, they, they need money, they get given more money. When poor people are in trouble, they get exploited and... Um, blamed and t like st um, stigmatized and all these kind of things so it's uh yeah it might be a little bit of a reckoning and it's pretty painful and upsetting that it has to come to such a situation as this where so many people around the world have already died from this disease and many more will but if we can take something from it like it is what it is at this point we have to fight it we have to be realistic about it like if we can turn that in the same way as we're talking about using this um using this time as like using the extra time that we've got because of the lack of other things going on as self betterment like if we can channel this into some kind of way hopefully people can uh reassess where power structures lie in our society and maybe how better we could be um implementing them and um and just like uh not fighting them but um managing them i think is the is a better word for it what do you have any like uh, book recommendations? Eat the rich, in other words. Yeah. Do you have any any recommendations on just like uh, videos, a movie, a show, a book, music, to just offer people who have that extra time in their hands, maybe something to help expand their minds, some sort of practice, whatever it is, anything you want to recommend out there. Um, to the listeners, to the folk around Aotearoa who might have an extra bit of time on their hands or might need cheering up and just a, a, a new, just a little a little spark of enlightenment and mind expansion. Do you have any recommendations along those lines? Oh, yeah, I mean, I've got, yeah, I, I don't know about recommendations per se, but I can certainly tell you what I'll be doing with extra time like that. I mean, I want to uh first of all keep up my writing as much as i can possibly but i'm realistic that there's not going to be as much to write about so maybe we'll be getting a bit creative by that if people have ideas stuff they want to read i'm happy to take uh um happy to take suggestions but certainly like the first thing i think of when i've got all this when i've got more like at the possibility of having more time to use there's two things that immediately spring to mind is i want to just be able to watch more movies and not just like not just catching up on new things. I want to go all the way back. I want to watch like weird um, artsy cinema from the old days. I want to like just anything that's well received throughout like the those movie lists of like movies you must see before you die. Like, well, I'm going to watch a bunch of them, you know. I'm going to try catch up on things like that. Um, 
I want to read heaps and heaps and heaps of books. I want to, I, I try to do that anyway, but uh, hopefully I'll be able to put even more of an emphasis on that now. Um, what's a, what's a, what's an example of a, of a book that you're, that you have either like recently read or that you are looking forward to reading or reading further? What's a, what's a book example? Um, probably on a similar line, like I've got heaps of books piled up all the time, which I want to get through, but I think probably this is a good time to, to churn out a few of the classics and maybe, uh, fill in some of those gaps in my, in my history there. So like I read, um, I read Great Expectations the other week, Charles Dickens actually like bloody thoroughly enjoyed it to be honest. So might chuck a couple more Dickens on the list at some point. I got a couple like um Daphne du Maurier books and John le Carré books that I'm meaning to get through I'm currently reading a Philip Roth one um Plot Against America which is crazy actually I tell you because like I I can't remember why I bought the book other than it was just one of those like late period Philip Roth ones that I really wanted to read because I you know, I I've, I've read his early stuff I've read his latest stuff I much prefer that range in like the sort of 90s early 2000s where I think he was just on a whole other level so um I picked up that book at a secondhand bookshop while I was wasting time um, in the city, just had, like had to do something um, to kill half an hour. So I wandered through a bookstore. I found that book in a in the history section, uh, funnily enough, instead of the instead of the fiction section. Picked it out, decided you know I'll have a I'll have a read of this one. I haven't read that before. Started reading it, looked it up on Wikipedia just to like do a bit of background, as I as I'm sure everyone does when they're getting into things like that. And hilariously, there's a mini series made by David Simon, the dude who created The Wire, of this book that I just started reading coming out like today or something like that. Like this week, it's it's premiering like a six part thing. So that's the the plot against America. So I'm gonna have to have still got a hundred pages to go before I can start the show. But I will watch that show as soon as I finish reading the book because like nothing David Simon's done has ever been less than excellent and um. In fact, I'll chuck that out as a recommendation since it's a good time to be able to get through the box sets and the back catalogue and things like that. Like, if anyone hasn't seen The Wire, that's the one of the very first things you've got to get to. Like, churn the whole lot of that out, man. It's like it's like Shakespeare meets the streets. It's just something you'll never see anything else like it on that on that um, sort of absolute top shelf of, uh, of television. So um, chuck that on the list as well. I also would, I suppose I've got the time now, better, well, hopefully, we'll, I, I, I just said hopefully, like, is I'm not hoping to get stuck in isolation, but um, if I do, now is a good enough time to read Moby Dick, because I was talking about that with you the other day, and I haven't actually read that book, so I think maybe I should. And plenty more where that came from, obviously. Yeah, there's uh, something popped up on my, on my YouTube feed, Talking Sopranos, which is... Um two guys from the sopranos old uh i think it was paul lee the young dude who was hooked on heroin and his uh his missus was uh cooperating with the feds um that the that actor which his name is michael imperioli and steve sharipa who plays old uh bobby the funny the funny lad <laughs> he's a he's just a funny dude um <laughs> When I when I picture Bobby from The Sopranos, I imagine a scene where Tony Sopranos tells him to like eat more salads because he's too fat, and then Bobby leans on a truck, and uh, Tony Soprano says like, "Oh, you're going to tip my truck over," um, and it's <laughs> very funny. Um, they, by the looks of it, they're starting a podcast that is going to go through each episode of The Sopranos, and those two actors who both had key roles on The Sopranos. Um, are going to talk their way through the episodes. It's called Talking Sopranos. Um, there's only a trailer, which basically explains it all and whatnot. So um, hopefully that might drop soon. And um, you're a big proponent of The Wire, um, and we both enjoy The Sopranos. So I was excited to see that start up. I've all, uh, last night I watched the a first episode of David Chang's Ugly Delicious on Netflix, which is just a, just some food stuff learning about food and and different ideas around food uh, it's quite similar to the the anthony bourdain style but with a you know you can't make the same content so he's got his own twist on that i 
I, this morning, Wildcard, I was listening to the J Electronica album, and oh, it's like a it's like the perfect album for this scenario because it's it's heavy, and you'd expect nothing less from someone like J Electronica. I think Jay Z features on all but like two or three songs, but he's not credited, so you don't expect to hear Jay-Z rap on any of these songs and he just suddenly appears out of nowhere and he spits absolute fire. Um, but it's heavy, it's absorbing, it's everything you would expect from Jay Electronica and a lot of Jay-Z. Um, so I'm excited to dive a bit deeper into that. But And it's interesting because I've got music um, that I enjoy that's a more in keeping with that J Electronica vibe, like a lot of thought provoking, um, kind of Kendrick Lamar -y, um, music, hip hop to be specific. Um, but then also, I've been listening to a lot of just, you know, background music. Like there's stuff like, uh, there's a producer called Knowledge who, um, he collaborated once with Anderson Park and he's just an instrumentalist, a, a producer. Um, currency makes great music just to have on in the background and kind of just vibe out to and it's always there's a lot of content just uh, like this morning I also read something uh, just getting insights from a couple of people who were part of making uh, To Pimp a Butterfly the album from Kendrick Lamar and they just offered some insights on the creative process there um, so I don't really know what I'm saying, but that's just content that I've absorbed recently. I was I alluded to um, a couple of interesting interviews there with Jay Electronica. I've seen one, the Red Bull Music Academy have heavy hitters. Like they had, I mentioned Doom, I mentioned Jay Electronica. They've also had Madlib on there previously. Um, so there's great content out like that. And then I follow like the, the extended comedian's um, the extended family like of Joe Rogan who are all, all very different and all very good comedians at what they do um, a lot of people would know them from uh, being exposed to them through Joe Rogan but like Theo Vaughn is my favorite comedian he <laughs> he's just the he's the he's the cunniest fun uh, in the world just with what he says um, Guys like Bert Kreischer and Tom Segura have their own show on YouTube, their own podcast. Theo Vaughn has uh, like a solo cast. He's got an interview podcast as well. Andrew Santino um, has his own little podcast show. Bobby Lee has the Tiger Belly podcast show, which is always hilarious. And then Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino have teamed up for their um, little Bad Friends podcast episode. And if you are interested in expanding your spanish wildcard tom sakura actually does a a podcast in spanish as well so it's a it's a little fun little listen to but point being i think the comedian aspect is, is it could be underrated at this time like there's so much uh content from comedians and i if you if you'd entertain me here wildcard while we're talking about being entertained i actually i i i, I appreciate like uh, watching a bit of Mark Maron's special, I think he had some highlights when he was on The Fighter and the Kid, which is Brendan uh, Schaub, Schwab and Brian Callen, to also from the extended Joe Rogan family. They were watching Mark Maron's special, just the little segments, and I can um, I can see the brilliance. I can see the uh, the craft, and it's funny, but it's also thought provoking, and so on. So I'm definitely. Um, and another comedian to watch highlights of live is Sebastian Maniscalco. So I can see the brilliance. I can appreciate stand-up comedy. But what I also enjoy equally as much is seeing the comedians just talk. And seeing these comedians in a comfortable envir environment where they can just... They don't necessarily need to perform bits. And they don't need to walk through their structured... Uh, performance they can just talk and I think that's something that I've definitely enjoyed in recent years is just hearing comedians talk and just because they're comedians they're probably going to be funny when they do talk and I have learned to because I think a lot of people just view comedians as the stand-up comedians but a lot of these comedians do shine 
in the podcast format where they can just talk and let their mind uh, flow. And it's it's always funny. It's sometimes you might learn something and and uh, have like introspective moments, but just hearing comedians talk on podcasts and little YouTube shows, or oh, it's it's always funny and it's always a laugh. And it's something that I definitely try to focus energy towards is just someone else making me laugh which is always you can't go wrong with laughing absolutely not like it's one of the absolute key essentials of um well, i was gonna say like a a good life but even just a good day like each day of there was um what's that dude's name um you know on espn they play a little clip of it all the time he was a college basketball coach in like the 80s and he died of cancer and they named uh, some award after him or something like that but he does a I used to know his name, I've forgotten it now. But there's a really famous speech he did at the one of the early ESPY awards where he was pretty much like dying of cancer and at one point they did flash the thing up on the top and was like, um, you've uh, it's like you've you've got thirty seconds left to finish and he's like, Man, they tell me I got thirty seconds to finish. The doctor told me I got thirty days to live. What do I care about your thirty seconds? And he he but in his speech he did this really like really beautiful um little sentiment he said like the key to a great the key to uh, a happy day and you should like every single day of your life you should try to do these three things um i think it was three things i think i've got it right but i might not um look up the speech anyway you've got time uh one is to laugh out loud um like uncontrollably laugh uh, another one is to be moved to tears by something and the other one is to tell someone each day that you love them like those three things you do those every single day you're going to live a happy fulfilling beautiful life um on comedians yeah that's like there's one of your three things taken care of comedians they make us laugh they help us through trying times and i sort of think about how like in the old days this might be a bit of a myth this might be like a projection i'm not sure if it was ever quite like this but it seems like there used to be like public intellectuals like there was a space in the in the culture for smart people to talk about smart things um, like long talk shows where it was like not just the five minute Jimmy Fallon, he's going to like laugh three times, tell you how great you are and you're going to sit there, soak it up and then go play beer pong with him or something like the actual intelligent conversations, long extended things and like people who could help you make sense of difficult times in this way. There's not really those shows anymore. Maybe they never really were. Maybe that was just a bit of a thing. Maybe people always thought guys like, um, well, I mean, I don't know, Norman Mailer was a grumpy old bastard, but, you know, maybe maybe that was always the case. Maybe all those people and everyone just thought they were dickheads, and that's why they stopped doing that kind of thing. But we sort of don't really have that space as much anymore. Like, there are people, like I can think of, um, um, uh, what's the dude's name who does the Cosmos show and the Scientist Fella, or people like that. Um, but I think comedians, to a great extent, have filled that spot. Like, they're the people who are not just the people who make us laugh, which is a really powerful, connective thing, because it's something you have to share with someone. Like, it's a humor. Um, they tell you a joke, you laugh at it. It's kind of a it's kind of a deep connection in its own way. Like, that's that. There's that. But there's also, I think, in a lot of ways, comedians have become philosophers for us in a in a way of helping us make sense of what's going on and so yeah i think comedy uh, over the next few months is gonna you know but it's not just i'm just not gonna say go through like a golden period or something like that because that'd be pretty trashy to say um, pretty exploitative but like they are the kind of people who can help us cope and yeah mark Marin, i've seen that special from him his it's very good you, the craft is certainly the thing i took out of it because he's not the kind of comedian where you like laugh out loud funny all the time he's sort of the guy where you like smirking and go ah, yeah that's true that kind of guy um but yeah that special goes some places by the end of the day the last 10 minutes are absolutely bonkers with in, in a good way like in the best possible way it's um it's wild but yeah his podcast is fantastic as well because he gets to real deep empathetic places with most of the people that he's able to interview like it's um it's quite a it's quite a profound thing to listen in on that and sometimes he's talking with other comedians and there's a different bit of a patter sometimes he's talking to um actors actresses musicians whoever like it's uh it's a nice wide scope um duncan trussell as well would fall in would does doesn't duncan trussell does he count as the wider rogan family he's he'd be close to it wouldn't he yeah definitely definitely for sure well the duncan trussell family hour is a excellent podcast to be listening to during trying times because he's always a guy who has a very positive outlook on things and also a very uh spiritual outlook on things so that's definitely 
I just churned through one with his meditation teacher yesterday, actually, um, come to think of it. And while, um, and on the, the, the topic of like vibe music as well, I, I tend to, I think, um, cause I'm a, I, I would class myself as a big deadhead. I love, love the, the Grateful Dead. And so I go through a lot of those archives as a podcast actually at the moment, um, called 36 from the vault which goes through all the dick's pick series which is like there was a guy called dick latvala something like that and he just like because the grateful dead were famous for they like every show was different every show had lots of improvisations um it was once it's done it's done so they didn't care they straight up encouraged people like way ahead of time before bootlegs were even that big of a thing like they they actively encouraged people to bring microphones and like recording things and they had a special like segment of the crowd signaled out for people to record the shows so they could share them around to other people and so there's basically recordings of every show they ever did and um the the dicks pick series was sort of 36 yeah it must be 36 because that's the title of the thing 36 different shows that were put out um and there's this podcast where they just go through the different ones. I've been listening to that and then listening to the shows beforehand that they do. And then also like, I mean, with the Grateful Dead, you just pick a date and it's like, well, here's like six shows they did in various years on that date. Here we go. Listen to whatever. They all sound like if you, if you get too deep, like you find people who are super intense about it, like the old, um, um, acid burnout hippies with the ponytail and gray hair sort of thing at the, at the farmer's market type of thing, you, that sort of stereotype you'd find people like that who could go into like it's actually a really good like four hour long documentary about the great were different a couple of years ago which is fantastic but you'll find those kind of like burnt out hippies who could say their favorite dark star for like <laughs> their five favorite versions of that song like well the one they did on uh january 15th 1971 was probably the best but uh october 17th 1978 was pretty close like that kind of thing ultimately they all sound the same because they're the same song it doesn't really matter what they do with them it's just like because there's so many inf well it's not quite infinite because you know, jerry garcia died 25 years ago or whatever so um but there's just because there's such a huge variety of different versions of them all you just pick a random pick a random day they all sound the same that's, ten that's generally what i do for my vibe out music is i just like um something i don't need to concentrate on so that i can really focus on writing or whatever is i'll just chuck pick a random show chuck that on leave it going in the background sweet as who is your favorite comedian right now oh that's a that's a tricky question because comedian are we going like because comedic actor count does stand-up comedian does like because i think a lot of my favorite comedians are people who have probably pushed away from comedy a little bit i'm gonna go with russell brand i think good answer but i'll reframe it for you and probably have the same answer who who's your who's your favorite person to make you laugh yeah yeah exactly because that's why i was sort of fumbling it with an answer because i'm not sure that he's that person anymore because he's gone into a very guru kind of thing which i you know massively appreciate i think he's fantastic what he does and his little his little video clips that he does on youtube and things like that are massively profound i only wish the bugger hadn't put all his podcasts behind a paywall the prick but um oh well um who makes me laugh like that i don't know um well, who do you enjoy that makes you laugh? I go in and out on these things sometimes. I mean, the the telly show um, Fleabag, which was the second se and final season, was on earlier this year. It was about the funniest thing that's been on telly for a long time, um, but also like a really deep drama in its own way. It's brilliantly written. Um, Phoebe Waller-Bridge is the, the writer, main actress in that. Uh, that's up there, but I think... I don't know, there's a show on Netflix, actually, now that I think of it, called I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson, which is honestly the funniest thing I've seen, like, funny, like, sketch comedy, the funniest thing I've seen borderline ever. Like, in terms of actual just laugh-out-loud hilarity, that is so far up there, I can't think what else can compete with it. In terms of just, like, laughs per second, it's short, sharp skits, hilarious, and, yeah, really well done. It's on Netflix. I, my favorite thing to watch to make me laugh is um, a thing called King and the Sting, which features Theo Vaughn and Brendan Schaub. They come together for this weekly show. Um, it's called King and the Sting, and oh, always guaranteed a laugh. It's so weird. It's so fucking funny, um, and it's just a beautiful thing. So I think we 
I think we hit the nail on the head with the intention of this episode. I think we've done a nice job um, with that in mind. Uh, so we'll wrap it up there. We will record our Patreon episode tomorrow, and who knows what we'll talk about there. And then we'll just pop up with further episodes of the Niche Cast. But um, I think this is the the most important episode, and it's something that we probably both needed to put out into the universe and just do our duty. And, and spread love and light to whoever's listening to it. So kia kaha, stay beautiful, and don't just get out there and enjoy the land of Aotearoa, to feel the land, get your feet on the land, get in the water, touch a tree, get your palms on a tree. You don't need to hug the tree per se, but... You can if you want. Um, the, you can if you want, but you definitely need to feel the power of the trees, feel the power of the land, and that might help you out as well. So stay beautiful, stay positive, make someone smile, be generous with your time and resources with other people, and we'll see you in the coming episodes. Cha-cha, cowabunga!